three. Hello, everybody. Good morning. How are we doing? Microsoft Teams 102 Intermediate Level with myself, Matthew Emson. Pleasure to take you through some of it today. And uh, obviously we're starting off with our, our welcome and introductions. Don't forget you can ask questions as you go through. Made an announcement on that earlier. And obviously we're looking for your feedback as well because your feedback helps to shape and define the future presentations that we do as well. In fact, on this one, you'll see in a moment or two that um, we've added a couple of things because of feedback from the last session. So thank you. We're going to have an overview of meetings today. Teams is about meetings, isn't it really? And uh, and chat and all the, the files and stuff that you can share through it. So we're going to be having a look at the different options. We'll have a look at through through those together. We'll set up a meeting. There's a lot of places you can do it from. As I say, there's a, a lot of types of meetings as well. Um, there's a meet now option uh, where you might suddenly think, oh, I wonder if, yeah, OK, they look free. I'll uh, just click on meet now, invite some people in and see who can make it. Um, always better to plan it, of course, because then people should really have got the time ready for you. But we'll have a look at those options. We'll also have a look at private channels. Um, not exactly sure why you would want to use them, um, but somebody did, or a couple of people uh, fed back and said, oh, we see that there are private channels. So I'll show you how to set those up um, and you can decide for yourself whether or not they are appropriate. I suppose they sit within a team, so you might have other channels and then you might just want to sort of take an, an overview approach in a, in a private channel perhaps. We'll have a little look at ellipsis again. You know those three dots in the middle of that that floating bar. Uh, we'll have a little. It's called chat management. It's really the options that are available within chat. And of course, one of those is to start a meeting, but it really depends where you click and whether you've you've popped your message out as the as the uh, the term is called in Teams. We'll have a look at sharing screens. Uh, it's not brilliant because obviously I'm already sharing my screen with you. That's what I mean. It's not uh, an easy task for me to do. So we're going to rely a little bit on video there and uh, a bit of PowerPoint as well. But it is as straightforward as, uh, as clicking on a button to share it. It's then knowing which is the best thing to share. We'll have a look at that. If we've got enough time as well towards the end, we shouldn't go over an hour. Um, certainly not today. I think we've got some back to back meetings today, haven't we? Uh, if we've got the time, we'll have a little overview of a live event. But I mean, basically you are in a live event now uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. Um, of course, as always, um, it wouldn't be right if we didn't tell you the other places where you can get some help. So there is, of course, always help within every app. There's help within Teams. We'll be having a look at it later. You quite often got those tell me what to do options as well. Uh, then there'll be training options and there's also the, uh, you know, the, the, the topics area and the what's new options as well. We'll have a look at those. We are going to push the Modern Workplace Hub because that's where we have the schedule of uh, these events and we have the the resources, the videos and stuff that uh, that come from the events. Uh, we post those up there and don't forget Google. Don't forget YouTube. You know, as I think I've said before, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people all around the world using the same software as us and um, posting their videos, posting their their hints and their tips as well. So we need to talk about meetings and I think one of the most important things is not to assume that the person you want to speak to is going to be free. So if you've got some team members and you do want to sort of speak to them, maybe go to that channel, maybe go to that team in um, in Teams uh, or start a new um, conversation, start a new uh, chat. Uh, and then as you can see, when you do start a new chat, you get the options that I'm showing you at the top of the screen there. You're going to see them a lot, and that's why I've put this slide up. You're going to see a camera, which would initiate a video call. You can always turn your camera off later. Uh, you'll see a telephone, which initiates an audio call. 
and again you can swap between audio visual have them both on turn them both off listen to someone else or or, or talk and uh, and watch somebody uh, and then you've got that screen share option wherever you see that rectangle with the arrow pointing up to it that is your screen share place now we're going to go in to teams just need to take that away try and minimize it somewhere i think i might end up having to leave that on at the moment because of the way i am sharing teams but just bear with me so there are two types of meeting there's this live event type of meeting which is the one you're on at the moment uh, and at the moment you can hear me i can't see or hear you you can ask questions via the question panel uh, there's generally a producer behind them um, my colleague Manya today is producing this one, so uh, she sort of set everything up ready to go. She's turned it on, counted it in, and then I'm able to just broadcast across to everybody. Um, it's not the best thing because you haven't really got that sort of um, that 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 both ways communication. So the other option really is a meeting, and the meetings we set up through our calendar. You can set them up in your Outlook calendar. And we're going to have a little look back at Outlook in a moment or two as well. Uh, and you can set them up via your Teams calendar. You get a few more options within your Outlook calendar. So if we have a look there, you can see we've got appointment, haven't we? We've got meeting, we've got Skype meeting and we've got a Teams meeting. And when you click onto Teams meeting, you get this sort of view and that's probably quite quite a familiar view to everybody if you've ever set up a meeting before but we can't really have a meeting that isn't a team meeting anymore can we because we can't so uh, we can't meet in the same same building let alone the same uh, you know the same building let alone the same postcode um so we don't really have a location uh, but you need some timings you need to invite people just like before um and you need to uh, use your optionals for for ccing people so let's go back to teams and in order to do the meeting, you've got a lot of options. Look, you can click on new meeting up at the top right hand corner of the screen. Meet now we're going to look at in a bit. We don't need to look at that just yet. Just to the right of that new meeting option, you've got a Chevron. If you click on the Chevron, there's another option to create a meeting and that's where you get to your live event options as well. Alternatively, you could just click somewhere on the calendar and when you click on the calendar you don't have to double click when you click on the calendar that familiar uh, meeting option will appear at least uh, I hope it's familiar I really can't get rid of manual there let me just try and no it's ah, that might work right I do beg your pardon let's go back to teams back into our calendar no, she's going to appear there. Sorry, man. Yep, you're going to be there. So we're going to click once onto a cell, any cell at all. It doesn't have to be where or when you want the meeting to actually happen. Uh, so I'm going to put some options in here. So we've got a, we've got to have a uh, title for it. You'll remember from the last one that we're working in Kings Heath Park, trying to get the children's playground reopened. Now I can type my uh, people in here and they'll all and they should automatically come up. There we go. So the people who you've generally contacted before will be the people who appear at the top of that list, but you are opening your address book. So you've got the option of really searching through the entire city council address book. Let's just put a bit more in there to narrow it down a bit. There we go. If you've got some optional attendees that you wish to invite, you can pop their names in there. That's a bit like CCing somebody, isn't it? It's a bit like giving them the information that there is a meeting. They don't need to attend, but it's a little bit of a heads up for it. You can then click into the date field. You can select your date. You can control the time. You don't have to go with the time slots you've been given. You can change those over. You'll automatically be given a 30 minute time slot. Try not to make your meetings go on for longer than an hour. Um, you generally find that people will will turn off um, before the hour is up even. Uh, but generally an hour should be long enough. If you need to set up a series of meetings, 
you know, of, of three hours or so over a few days, then that's probably your, your better option. Uh, now we're going to look at adding a channel to a meeting, but it's quite straightforward to add a channel. So it picks up all of the people that are in that team channel uh, and in, in, invites them uh, as well as any others you've added up there. Uh, you don't really need a location, do you? What are you going to put there in the kitchen or at the queue for Waitrose in Barn Green? Uh, I've downloaded Teams to my um, Huawei phone, so um, it is possible to uh, be in the queue for Waitrose, but uh, but we won't uh, change that today. And then you've got the main body area there where what you want to do is try and uh, look at the deliverables that are going to come out from the meeting rather than being a bit uh, a bit vague. Uh, try and specify exactly what it is that you're going to gonna get out. Maximum number allowed and we need some SIA qualified staff because the uh, the kids bite, don't they? So you can set all of that up and then when you're ready to go, you simply click once on send. And then just like a regular meeting that you've done in Outlook before, everybody in that meeting will now have an invitation and it will appear in your calendar. There you go. It will appear in your calendar. You can uh, open it up if you're going to make some changes to it. Any changes, obviously, people will be uh, notified about automatically. You've got the tracking option over on the right hand side, so you can see if anybody has responded. No one will respond at the moment to that one, obviously. You did have some formatting options within the text, but they're sort of the same wherever you go. They're the same in Outlook. They're the same in uh, in Word and so on, but some of the things that you might not have used before, they're up at the top of the screen. Look, so you've got your details for the meeting. You could have included files to it. There is a scheduling assistant, so if people use their calendars correctly and or not necessarily correctly, but if people use their calendars, then it is possible for you to use the scheduling assistant to see who is available. We've got quite a bit of availability for the time I sort of randomly chose on that one. Uh, then there's a couple of new apps which were around. Oh, sorry, there's a couple of new sections um, to meetings. We're not going to be looking at those today. We could look at them in a future session. We've got something called the whiteboard, which is I've started to use it a bit. I've started to find it quite useful uh, for some of the sessions uh, that I've attended on other people's whiteboards. I haven't set my own whiteboard up for this particular meeting. There we go. I'm going to use my triangle there just to navigate back. So I'll still get reminders. I'll still get prompts for those um, meetings and I'll still get um, the updates that people send to them as well. I can always change it. I can always cancel it, chat responses. Um, if I want to uh, get another person, there is a link within it uh, and I could forward the link to them. So I've got the same sort of options that I had in Outlook, but I've actually got uh, a few more sort of capability options which are available to me as well. Now I mentioned that you can create a meeting from a chat, so it's um, it's good form to sort of send somebody a message to ask if they're available to meet, you know, before you meet them. Uh, and in this sort of scenario here, I'm going to just send a message to a couple of people just to see if they're available. So I'll pop their names in there. Now, I don't, oh dear, I don't want to pick the wrong person, do I? So we go try and pick the right person. Now I have, don't seem to have that camera or phone or screen share option up there and it won't appear until you click into your message window like that. So I've clicked into that message window down at the bottom of the screen and some of those options have now appeared. There's the camera, there's the uh, phone, you know, for an audio call and there's the screen share option. Now this one over on the right hand side, I'm not sure if you're aware of it yet, but it's called pop out and what it will do is pop your message out so that you get a, a slightly bigger view of it. But when you do do that, you have lot. We haven't lost. It just doesn't include those call options within that popped out window, so you can leave the window open. It doesn't matter. You can just go straight to the call option. If you do click on your video camera to start 
a call, it will automatically start the call with the camera on. If you click on the phone, it automatically makes a, a, an audio call. And I think I mentioned earlier, you can just flick between uh, both of those as you go. Now, I can't make another call because I'm already on this call, this broadcast, if you like. Uh, so what I've done is just got a little bit of PowerPoint ready for it and a little bit of, of video as well. So we're just going to have uh, a look at those. So what you will or, or what you have seen are those icons up the top there. And then I'd click on the icon and it would tell me who I was ringing. And then once they've picked up the uh, participants, once they've picked up, I should see their their profile pictures, their their icons if they've got them, or their initials if not. And I think a lot of people seem to have, have uh, sort of gone back to initials, haven't they? Now I've always got that floating bar. That's what I call that. We'll have a little look at that in a bit of detail in a minute. So. It, it, it doesn't seem very difficult, does it? You, you click on the relevant option, you ring someone, they answer. And that's just like making a, a, a telephone call, except with this one, you're on an internal network and the other people you, you can speak to are your colleagues rather than your uh, family and friends. But of course you can use this sort of software for that sort of thing too. Now, there's a little more PowerPoint here. So um, take the plunge and make a call. Look, here's um, a couple of people working harmoniously together. Um, not sure who they are. Um, maybe maybe that's Karen. Maybe she's saying, I want to see your manager uh, or something like that. Or maybe she's just saying, look, it's so easy. You simply find the people, you call them and then you chat to them. Now, I've kind of got that in a bit of a video. Uh, I'm going to have to try and commentate over the video, so I might have to pause it a couple of times to catch up, uh, but there's no other way to to show a call in place without doing that. So just click on the link and ignore all the messages that say it's terribly dangerous and so on. So here I am picking up at the same place and clicking onto the camera icon and I make. Oh Lord, you didn't want to see that. That was a couple of days ago. I'm wearing a shirt and tie today, so I've made my call and I'm waiting for for people to answer and they've answered straight away. If you're unsure who anyone is, hover over their icon and it will tell you a little bit about them there. Wherever you move, whenever you move your cursor around, that floating bar will appear. Um, we're going to have a look at it in a little bit more detail yet. When somebody's talking, you might notice that the icon uh, pulsates. So I think in just a moment, someone's going to talk here and uh, we'll see that pulsating. Just keep an eye on that as you go through. So we've got the buttons on the floating bar. Turn your camera off, mute it. Oh, there you go. There's Vanessa talking away. Um, there you go. Yeah, that pulsated well there. So you can turn your camera off, turn your mute off, uh, turn your audio on and off. You've got your screen share option still. Now, ellipsis, those three dots, we're going to have a look at those in a minute or two. I've kind of taken a picture of that. Got it on a, a separate bit of PowerPoint. You might not be aware of this, it's called raise your hand and um, if somebody wants to sort of get your attention during a meeting, then they can click on raise a hand or you can click on it. You do get notification, you can see it there. If you click onto that, you can see that Vanessa raised a hand and you can also see that over on her icon. You can start a conversation with someone, so I'm going to come back to that uh, participation window in a moment, but you can just start a conversation with somebody in the meeting. But of course, remember everybody in the meeting is going to see it, uh, but you can start that conversation there. And then if you, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm just going to take a sip of water. If you need to add somebody into your notification, uh, into your conversation panel, um, your participant panel, sorry, and then type in the name of the person, give them a call and if they're available, they'll answer and then you've got your colleagues, your team members on screen with you. So I'm going to recap on a little bit of that, um, just give you a bit more information on it too. Um, so we'll go back to the PowerPoint now that's ended. And we'll uh, we'll see if Karen looks a bit happier there. Um, so uh, 
let's look at that floating bar now that's not that floating bar that uh, you thought you'd be on in uh, in magaluf uh, this week unfortunately those plans are on hold aren't they uh, i wonder if the german market will be coming back this year that's uh, something to consider but here's that floating bar at uh, the bottom of the screen it kind of appears down at the bottom doesn't it towards the uh, the middle of the screen and it appears disappears as you move your cursor around the options that you've got there reading left to right you've got the length of time that you've been on the meeting uh, that's quite useful if you're keeping an eye on it if you might have something else to go and do as well um, or if you're just buying in the kettle uh, you've got your camera on off and your sound on off when you go into a meeting you really should go in with your sound off you can have your camera on if you've managed to get to the hairdressers by now um, or the barber but um, you, you don't really need your camera off it drains the resources it drains the um, the connection makes the connection just that tiny bit slower has a negative impact on it uh, but with your sound um, difficult for me because I love talking but um, when you go into a meeting keep your sound off and then always um, forget to put it back on when you start talking and then somebody tells you and you end up going back turning it on and then repeating everything you just said you've got your screen share option just to the right of that we'll have a little look at the uh, the help there's a really good help um, explanation and video for that one and it gives me a chance just to remind you about the help here are those three dots the ellipsis it's called isn't it and um, when you click on there it's it's not going to turn anything off you're not going to break anything or anything like that but you have got some quite useful options so um you know if somebody hasn't been to the hairdresser or you're confronted with a uh, three foot long beard then you might want to turn off the incoming video um don't try that now i don't think you can start recording your meeting your discussion I have used that a couple of times, but I've always said to people, look, um, I'm about to record it because um, I'm going to need to go back, make some notes on this. And I want to really listen to what you have to say rather than just, um, you know, write everything down. So um, do let people know if you're going to record them. You've got a keypad you can go to as well if you need to click away, do a bit of uh, do a bit of sum, see how much money you've saved during lockdown. You've got your background effects. I'm sure we've all sort of had a go, put ourselves in a spaceship or on the beach or something like that at Magaluf again. But um, it, again, that's a drain on your signal. That's a drain on the strength of your Wi-Fi. Um, I'm not going to go into the three above them. Consult then transfer, transfer and hold. I've never had to do that during a team meeting. Um, it's exactly the same as when you would use a telephone when you transfer a call or when you put somebody else on hold. Um, it's not something I've had to do. If, if you're doing a lot of it and you really want to see it and stuff, then please let us know in the in the questions and we'll try and um, get something into a future session for you as well. Uh, full screen does exactly that, takes you into full screen mode. Um, now there are some uh, device settings as well and if you were to select that option you, you, you'd get what you thought you'd get you will get your uh, audio and uh, camera options so um, there is an option at the bottom which is worth talking about um, it's relatively straightforward you, you've got a PC microphone and speaker um, and you've got your uh, camera now down at the bottom there can you see there's something called private viewing and that allows participants to move through a presentation on their own not in a live event but in a team meeting then the way that that default is set and you may not know this and the people doing the presentations may not know uh, but if you are sharing a presentation then somebody can move through it um, quicker than you're talking about it they can get a an independent view of that presentation so that's something for us uh, in the training team to play around with uh, and then promptly to probably tell people not to use so a little bit there about meetings we're, we're carrying on with meetings i'm not going to recap so much at each one because we're having a look at the different ways in which we can meet uh, and there is a meet now option if you simply can't wait there's a meet now option I mentioned it earlier on it's in the calendar 
Uh, we'll go back in there in a minute, have a look at it, look at the options we've got when we set it up. Oh, look, that's much better. That could be my my Tinder profile. I don't, is Tinder still a thing? I don't suppose it is, is it, with um, coronavirus? But um, so regardless of which way you're going to swipe, you can change the name of that so that when people get the invite to join your meeting that you're just sort of setting up on the hoof um that they, they'll know a little bit more about uh, what it is whoa dear okay yeah that one's from the police gazette that picture i think uh, once you initiate your meet now option you need to start bringing some people in so you'll start typing in uh the names of the people you want to include let's, let's get rid of that uh the names of the people you want to include into the meeting so I'm going to show you that in um, Teams. Just get back in there for a moment. So into my calendar. And then I've got my Meet Now option. If I click once on Meet Now, it'll tell me that my event's in progress. And um, if I leave, yeah, yeah, that's not going to work. Um, but you saw that in the previous slide, didn't you? Obviously, when I took those pictures, I wasn't in the live event. I did think it would be a little bit like that. And I think I I may have mentioned that earlier on as well. OK, so I'm just going to go back to the PowerPoint there. My apologies. I thought that would go a little bit more than it uh, a little bit more than it did. But it is simply a question of clicking on meet now. You do get that picture. You just saw that behind. Um, I don't know if you saw the pop up window I had, but the pop up window started saying that if I was to uh, carry on with a um, meeting now, obviously I would leave the live event um, and just sort of leave you hanging on in there. So I've got the option to join now. You can go in with your speaker and your microphone on. Um, you, I guess you're the one that's going to do the speaking and stuff, aren't you? If you're calling the meeting, you can go in with your camera on or off as well. If you have linked a telephone to your Microsoft Teams account, it may, may be possible to listen to the content using your mobile phone if you have linked it. I did have a quick go at doing that yesterday. Um, but I don't have a work phone. I've only got my Huawei phone, so uh, I didn't want to go ahead and set that up on there. Once you have clicked on to join now, you get your familiar picture there or just a you know blank screen, blank background if you turn your camera off. And then you've got your notification, your people window over on the right, your participation window. Now, what some people may not be aware of is that you can download statistics for your meeting. Wherever you see that arrow pointing down to the line, that's an option to download a report from the meeting and a report from this sort of meeting would be the number of people that attended or who attended rather. You know, uh, and when they attended, they might they may have joined the meeting uh, and they may have left the meeting as well. Now, rather than just talk over a blank screen. If we go down to the help and we have a look at topics. And then if I was to put in meet now. We'll look for those options. There we go. Straight away it's come up. It says that if you're in an existing meeting, you can click meet now. If it's a new one that you haven't started yet, click on meet now as well. Uh, there's a video for it as well. And uh, I'm just going to take a moment just to let you have a little look at that video. Now the audio from the video may or may not play through the events. Uh, some of them have videos, some of them don't, and some of them don't even seem to want to play. There you go, that was a little bit slow. So she's just saying if you want to turn it into a quick meeting, And my broadcast is a little bit slow. So she's telling you there you can click onto the meet now camera option. Yeah, I think my broadband's not fantastic on there, so I'm not not just going to sit there and uh, 
I'll let that go. But if you want to go into the help at some point, you will be able to type in big and find that. Now, I was going to do that with something else in a moment or two as well. I just wanted to go over just a couple of things about meeting etiquette, first of all. And it's just really around that uh, that bar down there. So let me just bring that one up, the floating bar. When you go into a meeting, I think I mentioned about keeping your uh, your microphone off. Uh, just keep an eye on that as you go through. Uh, there's quite a lot of options to uh, add people. So obviously when you're in the call, then you're going to be focusing on the screen that's in front of you. So you're going to be using your uh, add participants button. You can chat to people within the meeting and um, sort of you know get their answer on a sort of side issue or something like that and you've got your raise a hand option and that really should be the way that um, you get the um, attention that your particular piece needs um, by clicking on your your raise a hand option generally um, previously when we you know had meetings around a the table there's been um, so, you know, somebody that runs the meeting, a chair or whatever. And I think when it comes to these team meetings, that responsibility has generally fallen upon the person that set the meeting up to chair it. So it should be that person that's keeping an eye on whether people are raising their hand, whether they need to um, to get something important in that they need to say. OK, so those are pretty much meetings. We haven't quite finished with them because there's another option that we're going to go and have a look at in a little while as well. But before we um, go and do that, while we're in this area, we're going to have a little look at screen sharing. And again, it's just going to be a little bit of PowerPoint. And then I'll uh, just talk you through a little bit of the uh, the video that's there and the, sorry, sorry, the help that's there already. So as we all know, um, sharing is caring, isn't it? And um, it's, it, it's really quite straightforward. You need to be um, online in Teams, obviously. You don't need to be in a call. You can just go to your share screen option and share your screen. But generally, if you're doing that, it's um, you know, it, it, it's somebody you're having a conversation with, so you're probably already on your Teams call. That's the little icon there, the rectangle with the arrow. As soon as you click on that, you'll see the options appear at the bottom of the screen. And we're going to have a little look at this in a moment in Teams together. The option that you want to share is your desktop, uh, because that will make sure that whatever you do open, um, that it's always going to be the most recent window. Uh, so it's always going to be the uppermost window. Now, I, I did say earlier on when I was going through the, the list of objectives for today that it's not 100% screen sharing. Um, it's certainly not 100% for me to be able to show it to you seamlessly because I'm already sharing a screen. But you do have some options in there for people being able to take control. I can't give anyone those options today. Uh, that's something we could expand on um, as we uh, um, as we do some more sessions. Uh, and it's not something I can easily show you here because as soon as I was to press print screen to take a picture of it, it disappears uh, and it's not in the picture. So if you've ever used it, it appears at the top of the screen uh, as an option to give control. Uh, and then um, the, the other person can allow or deny if you request control. Uh, but again, I can do a little bit of work on that and, um, and do a bit more for you. But again, I have done a little bit of research and I found a couple of things which are quite, quite useful. If you're showing a system like perhaps Voyager, or People Solutions or Care First, if you're sharing that, then you don't always see those drop down menus you know you have a little triangle and you click on it for a list of options doesn't always show those um, and sometimes look up windows so a window that appears within the window uh, where you might type in some sort of wildcard information looking for something uh, that doesn't um, appear in the screen share all the time uh, it has done a couple of times it doesn't appear all the time uh, but again there's a a handy little bit of help here. Before we finish, we're going to have a little look at what's new because there's uh, there is something quite exciting that's uh, that's new. Now, uh, 
so yeah, hold on in anticipation for that. So if I type in screen share, we'll see what we get. It, it's pretty much told you um, the things that we do already. So, you know, to share your screen, click onto the triangle and then select your desktop. Uh, but there is uh, a video in the training section as well. So, um, yeah, I'll just have a search for it. That was how I found it before. Um, screen share. Sometimes you want to, no, there you go. Yeah, it's just taking me to the same one. Uh, sometimes you just need to be a bit cleverer about how you search. Uh, uh, there is a video you can watch. And of course, it came up just literally half an hour ago. Um, well, go for it down there. I was going to show you how to find it. I was called show your screen there rather than share your screen. Look, that's probably why I didn't find it straight away. Um, this one should be OK. I'm not going to talk over it. I'm just going to let you watch. Mm, way to go indeed yeah there you go um teams is full of those sorts of things they're really really useful and um they're, they're pretty much available um from any of those options because you've always got that search option up there as well okay we've got a couple of things left to look at we're going to be having a look at private channels we're going to be having a look at settings as well don't forget this uh, video will be available to you a bit later on today it's published onto the modern workplace hub and uh, I'm also thinking of maybe uh, creating a sort of Yammer place for it, but I don't, I don't want it in too many places because then, of course, you have to go and update all of those different places. So really, there should just be one, one central repository, one, one central place for them. Um, let's go and have a look at our settings. Now, this was a, a particular request uh, from a few people so i'm not going to i'm not going to name names but um, uh, a few people requested a look in settings now we had a little look in there on the first session where we changed our picture and you remember i said you can increase the size you can you, you can decrease it as well um, we're going to go into this option here though today we're going to go into settings uh, do feel for mania keep appearing up there like that let's try and get her over in the corner so I'll go down to my settings and um, I think one of, one of the first things to start with obviously is uh, is general. Um, so you've got three three main options there, haven't you? Um, you've got a, a sort of default setting um, for the theme. Um, you can go to a dark setting which kind of reverses everyone, uh, everything, uh, the colours, uh, and you've got a high contrast option as well. But um, I just tend to go with the, the default option. Uh, team starts for me when um, my laptop starts up and, uh, uh, and runs through. The app language I use is, of course, English, and there isn't a different English than United States English for the keyboard shortcuts, but they're pretty much the same wherever you go, aren't they? Um, I've got uh, a privacy option as well. Um, now, within Do Not Disturb, that's automatically set on my uh, Teams one is do not disturb because I'm in a meeting and doing this presenting. Um, but there is a way in which you can sort of get people to bypass your do not disturb settings for urgent things that will come through anyway. But if you want a particular person or people to be able to notify you or get notifications of when they've mentioned you um, or when something's happened in any of your teams or any of your existing chats, then you can set up their priority access in there. Let's go back to that option. Uh, you can block people. Uh, well, you can't actually um, because that facility is not enabled. Otherwise, we could end up accidentally blocking each other, couldn't we? Uh, and then that wouldn't work. 
that's within privacy. Um, do you know that little eye that appears next to conversations or chats that you've had when somebody's seen a message that you've sent or you've seen a message that somebody sent? Um, that's like a red receipt uh, that controls the red receipt. Uh, I was getting fed up with the number of times Microsoft said, oh, oh, can we get your feedback about this? Can we get your feedback about that? So I've sort of, I've sort of turned that off for a bit and uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll turn it back on at some point. Notifications, yeah, had quite a few questions on this, so definitely need to include this. First of all, you've got um, different areas of the screen. So you've got three main types of notification, right? You've got something called banner, something called email, and something called only show in feed. Only show in feed is up here. Can you see the bell? It's a little bit sort of grayed out because I've got a window open in front of it, but you can see the bell with the activity bell. That's your feed, if you like. Now, banner, that's at the bottom right hand corner of your desktop. So you know where the time is and the, the little icon you click on to get all of your uh, Wi-Fi stuff right down in the bottom right hand corner. It's like a little text message icon. That's the banner. And if you want your notifications to appear down there, I think um, Outlook currently appears down there, doesn't it? System updates, things like that. Um, then you can have them appearing down there and I'll show you where that is in a moment. Uh, and of course, you've got the option for email as well. Um, if you're getting bombarded with emails because you're in a lot of teams that um, are quite vocal and, and have a lot of discussion, then you might want to consider maybe changing it from email to banner. Uh, and then at least you won't be having to go into Outlook or have Outlook pinging sort of, you know, routinely throughout the day. I don't like this in Teams where you can't see that there is a scroll bar. So never assume that you've seen everything on the screen. So scroll down a bit further. Um, there's this option down here, look, called um, manage notifications. Now that, that that's from the other way. So you can manage incoming notifications, but would you like to be notified of when somebody changes their status to online or available? They might spend a lot of time um, do not disturb or a lot of time in a meeting uh, and you want to be able to uh, access their their time. Um, so you could set up uh, like an alert for when somebody goes online. Devices we kind of looked at that a little bit. Oh dear, I'm sorry. <laughs> we've got, I'm not wearing a shirt and tie, am I? Uh, we've kind of looked at that a little bit already. Um, I've got some headphones in, so uh, that's why it's picking that up with a microphone um, and you've got your, your camera. Hello, everybody. Uh, we've got some permissions as well. Um, you know, when you download an app and it says it needs permission, you just go, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, these are the sort of things you're, you're, you're allowing teams to, to access. That, you, you can turn it off, but it comes turned on and those are the permissions that you should have. And then within calls, um, you've got um whether whether or not your calls go straight to voicemail or, or whether they actually written obviously they they should written now yeah we sit behind our desks don't we but none of us are at a desk we're on our spare we're in our spare rooms we're, we're on our sofas we're in our kitchens as, uh, as as i am as you saw just a moment ago um and sometimes you might be out of the room or you might just be on the other side of the room. So let it ring a bit longer. I think the default yeah, is 20 seconds, um, but I've set mine to 60 seconds, which does give me time to get to it. But if you've got a headset plugged in, then, you know, difficult to hear it as well. So just remember to unplug your headset if you're going away from it. Uh, you can configure your voicemail. I haven't done that. Um, I rely on people to leave me a message to say, sorry, I missed you. Uh, you can change your ringtone if you like um, so that it's a little bit different. Whenever I hear the Teams ringtone on an advert for Teams on the television, I'm, it's almost like I've got, I've got to stand to attention because I don't want someone's after me. Um, that's so annoying. Uh, so I try not to, uh, to watch ITV and uh, try not to watch too many Teams adverts. If you have a, uh, what's it called, a uh, text telephone, um, then you can turn on your TTY mode. Um, a good um, a good option that not just for uh, deaf or hearing impaired, but um, for anybody that's got one of those devices. So I hope that was useful about settings from the feedback that we had from the last one. Really pleased to be able to do that. Going to have a look at something else in uh, that, that was part of the feedback as well. 
um, and that is a private channel. Uh, then we'll have a little pick up on things like, oh, what happens if I miss the start of a meeting? Can I already, you know, can I join in and that sort of stuff? We'll have a little bit of a recap and if there's time, I'll uh, bore you a bit with live events. Um, otherwise, just a couple of bits to, to have a look at now before we, uh, for, well, the pubs are open, so uh, before we uh, we rush off to join the, the queue for Weatherspoons. Right, private channels. So I've got to go back to my teams. Uh, I've had some notifications as uh, as everything's been going on. Uh, but if I just go down to my um, city park team, there you go. Now on the city park team, I'm going to add a new channel. So I'm going to add a, uh, a private channel. So if I click once on there, I can select the option add channel. Now there's 12 people in my channel and there's only two other people that I want to get access to this particular channel so that we can look at the work that's been carried out, but so it doesn't appear that we're kind of micromanaging it or, or on it all the time, but it is a very important piece of, uh, of work that's going on. And uh, we've got the, the mayor to come and, uh, and open this, uh, this playground a secret group for mayor's visit there we go uh, the mayor's going to come and thank everybody for their their hard work and then the privacy we've only ever looked at standard teams before but if you want to choose private selecting that option will then allow you to go to your next screen and then on the next screen, you can just add the people who you want to the channel. I suppose I better invite Manya because she's right there on the screen watching everything we do. Uh, and I'll invite uh, Vanessa, but I'll keep the boss out of it. Uh, so I'll add those people. There we go. They're added. Don't forget, it's always good to have more than one owner. So I'm automatically the owner, uh, but it's always good to have one more for any channel or any team. Click on to done. There we go. And that private channel now appears in my list with a padlock on it like that. There we go. Right, so getting up towards the end there for you. Uh, apologies for the delay. So I uh, was talking about missing the start of uh, a meeting or something like that. When you go to your chat, any previous meetings you've had will appear, uh, oh, sorry, any previous chats and or, or meetings and any uh, anything you've done kind of thing will appear in that chat list. Uh, if you just have a look down here, so I, I was having a look at surveys and there's a couple of things you can use for surveys. So I'm sure in a week or two, I'll email you all and bore you to death with some more questions about wasn't it good and uh, would you like some more? And then you'll say, yes, it was brilliant. And yes, we'd like some more. Uh, so I might as well just fill that in myself on your behalf as normal. Uh, but you can see that uh, I had a, a weekly social meeting. And if I click back onto that, I uh, know that's because I'm in a meeting already. There you go. Um, here's one that I did earlier in good Blue Peter fashion. Anything with a calendar on means you can go back in to that meeting. Uh, and you can rejoin it or you can join it if you've missed the start of it. So that will uh, that option is always there for you. You can use the link that you have in your Outlook calendar. You can use the link that you have in your Teams calendar. Uh, as long as you've got a join button, then you can always go in and join that meeting. Uh, I think that's what I'm going to be doing myself a bit later on. I've been invited to a meeting too, but, but only for sort of 10 minutes of it. Um, so I've got to wait until the correct time and then click on to join and join in. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, that's a, a much better use of my time than inviting me to the whole hour long meeting, um, but only having 10 minutes of, um, of relevance in it for me. So I hope we've um, uncovered a few more bits and pieces around Microsoft Teams and in this case meetings. 
and I think I'll, I'll just leave you with a with, with a couple of things. I will go through the PowerPoint again, but I won't be um, going into too much detail. So um, if you are going to have a meeting on the hoof with somebody, um, rather than going straight to meet now, maybe just send them a chat message and say, hey, is it OK if we meet up? And then you've got your options within chat that you can use. Click onto your camera or to your phone handset and it will come up telling you it's calling them and then it should appear. Remember that whoever's talking, especially if it's new people and you've got a lot of people and you'll see in a minute that you could have quite a few hundred people now in meetings, um, their icon will pulsate if they're talking. And um, I think we captured that picture there, didn't we? Look just as Vanessa's is, you can see the, the, the light around that one. Don't forget you turn your camera on and off. You can turn your sound on and off. You should really have your sound off unless you have got something you're contributing to the meeting. You've got your share option in the middle. You've got your ellipsis. There weren't many options on there, were there, that we um, really needed to use. You can raise a hand in a meeting. You can go into a conversation. If you have a conversation during the meeting, everybody in the meeting will see the conversation. And you can add participants to the meeting as well. Uh, obviously, you, you got your hang up button, but I hate clicking on that because I don't know if I'm clicking on the one for this event or the one for the next one. So there you go. Don't forget, Karen's got a bit of guidance for you in Teams. It's going to tell you to find the people. It's going to tell you to call them and it's going to tell you to chat with them. The first part of any meeting at the moment seems to be taking up with uh, oh how are you you know what you're up to and that's just the same as it as it was back at work, isn't it? So really, the the only thing that's changed is um. It is the location and that is quite a major change, isn't it? So I've been through that floating bar, been through the options that you've got within your ellipsis uh, area, showing your device settings. Some people may have other cameras, external stuff. Some people may have external speakers and so on, um, but just making you aware that that's how you get to those options. You had your meet now option. It's down in the calendar. You click once on meet now. You can add people to the meeting. You give the meeting a name. Uh, and then as people respond, you'll be talking to them. You can share your screen. If you're going to share your screen, you're going to need to click on the box with the arrow. That's going to bring up the options at the lower section, just like you saw in the video just now. And you're going to be able to select desktop. And you can give control or request control. It is a question of really pressing allow or deny. Um, if you've um, you might have used NetMotion or something like that, or Skype or something previously, and people have taken control. It's it's a really good option. And as I say, if you want to see that, let us know in the feedback, and we'll um, we'll put a bit of a masterclass on for that, and uh, and send out a communication for it in a week or so. So thank you very much for your time today. We're not quite finished. I do want to nip into Teams to show you one more thing, but we had our meeting overview. We set up a Teams meeting and we had a look at the Meet Now option and private channels. We went over the three dot options on the floating bar. Chat management was it was covered, but it was more about um, opening the facilities to meet within a chat. As I said before, in the first session, we looked at how we can format a, a message and that sort of stuff, didn't we? We had a look at sharing again. Um, as I say, not 100% in terms of being able to to show you because I'm already sharing, but there are some resources and I've, I've signposted to you uh, to those as well. I'm not going to take up your time with the live event overview um, because we are almost towards the end of the session at the moment. The one thing I do want to leave you with is down here in help and it's what's new. Uh, I will talk a little bit actually about the live event. I've got a couple of moments there. Uh, there's a search option that's new. Um, you know, wherever you are generally in a Windows thing, you can press Control F, can't you? Uh, and it helps you search through and uh, find something you're looking for. Well, that option's been available now since uh, July the 2nd, since last week, uh, for you to be able to search through any chats that you've had or um, or any channels. Um, not necessarily a chat you've had, but a chat within a channel as well. Uh, and you can now go up to about 300 uh, people in a meeting. There you go. Uh, live events, these, this could be 20,000 at the moment. I think there's about three of you, isn't there? Uh, but th there could be about, um, you know, 20, 30 or 1,000 on, uh, on the live events. Uh, but with a meeting, 
just 300. You get a lot more interaction in a meeting, don't you? I mentioned this at the beginning. Uh, with a meeting, there's a two way conversation. You can turn your cameras off. You can turn your audio off. You don't know. Uh, so sorry, you know everybody that's in the meeting. You may not actually know them, but you know who is in the meeting. A live event's very different. I've no idea um, how many people are out there. I've no idea um, uh, what's going on with teams generally, but I've no idea how many people are out there. Um, I'll get a good gauge of that when the feedback comes in at the end of the session and when we when we publish the video online as well. Uh, but live events do give you some control. So if you don't want people firing questions at you all the time uh, verbally and you don't want people turning cameras on and off and feeds on and off then the live event gives you a lot a lot more control you know when somebody joins you know when someone leaves you know if somebody rejoins um, with a meeting that's not necessarily the so is it um, but there you go a bit conscious that we're we're using up all the time here and I do like to uh, give you a couple of minutes afterwards. So thank you for your time today. Um, we've had a look at those areas that we set out to look at. Don't forget that there is a whole world of help out there for you and uh, it's pretty much based on you helping yourself to the help. So it's there. You've just got to find it and we've had a little signposting to it today as well, haven't we? So thank you very much for your time. I look forward to uh, the next session that I'm doing, which I think is on Friday, which is working from home number two. Um, got to try and think of something to tell you for an hour there. Um, but in the meantime, uh, let's all hope that the uh, the Christmas market is uh, is everything you want it to be this year. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>